In this chapter of our environment, we begin by learning about ecosystem. What are its components? The first picture is that of a forest. Then we have a picture of a mangrove. And then we have a picture of a desert. In all these pictures, we see that organisms such as plants, animals, humans, microorganisms, as well as the physical surroundings like the water, the soil, interacting with each other and maintaining a balance in nature. Each of these systems is called an ecosystem. So to repeat, we can say in an ecosystem, plants, animals, the living and non-living continuously interact with each other and as they interact with each other, there's a continuous flow of energy and matter. So an ecosystem is a structural and functional unit of the biosphere consisting of living and non-living components interacting with each other, resulting in a continuous flow of energy and matter to form a stable system. To find the components of the ecosystem, we see the ecosystem is made up of two components. The biotic components, which is the living components. And the living components would be the plants, the animals, and the microorganisms. These are the living components of the ecosystem. And then we have the abiotic components. The abiotic components means the non-living components. Non-living would be the soil, the water, the minerals, and etc. present in that area. So in this slide we learned what is an ecosystem and we learned the two components of the ecosystem, biotic and abiotic. Now, ecosystems are of two types. We have the natural ecosystem, like that of a forest, or we have a pond, a small water body that is a pond, or a larger water body that is a lake. These are all natural ecosystems. Then on the other hand, we have the artificial ecosystems, like the crop fields, maybe the peri fields or the wheat fields, the corn fields that men grow. Those are artificial ecosystems. Even the gardens, the gardens in the cities are not natural, they're artificial ecosystem. And here we have the aquarium, which is also an example of an artificial or a man-made ecosystem. When it comes to nutrition, organisms can be broadly classified into three. First are the producers, which are the green plants green plants and certain bacteria. We call them producers because they take up the sunlight directly from the sun and they prepare their own food and these are called producers. Then we have the consumers. These consumers depend on the producers for their food. They either depend directly on the producers or indirectly. Like for example, the cow would depend directly on the producer because it eats grass, it is a herbivore, it depends directly on the producer. But when we take the example of a lion, it does not eat grass. It depends indirectly on the producers. So consumers can be basically divided into two, those that depend directly on producers and those who do not depend directly on, con on producers. However, consumers are, are unable to prepare their food and they depend on the producers for their food. Then last we have the decomposers and these decomposers, once the plants and animals or other living organisms, they die, these decomposers break down, decompose their body and return the material back to the environment. So depending on sustenance, organisms are divided into three. We have the producers, which perform photosynthesis and hence prepare their own food. Then we have the consumers that depend directly or 
indirectly on producers because they are unable to prepare their own food. And then we have the decomposers. And the decomposers decompose the dead remains of both plants, animals and other organisms and return them back to the environment. So producers are organisms that make all, make organic matter such as sugar and starch from inorganic substances like carbon dioxide, water in the presence of radiant energy, the process of photosynthesis. Consumers depend directly or indirectly on the producers for their nutrition, they cannot prepare their own food. Now the consumers are further divided into many types. First we learn the herbivores. And like in the picture you see, here's a picture of an elephant, giraffe, a zebra, a rabbit and a cow. They all are grass eating or plant eating organisms. They depend directly on plants for their food. And these are herbivores. Then we come to carnivores. Example is a lion or a tiger. Then here we have the hawk, the eagle. These are all carnivores. And by now you would have guessed what is an carnivore. Organisms that depend indirectly on plants for their food. They are usually flesh eating animals. So the carnivores usually depend on the herbivores for their food and the herbivores depend on plants for their nutrition. And then we have the omnivores like the hen that eats plants and animals for nutrition. We have the rat, we give the example here, we have the hen, the mice, the, the crow, the dog bear. These animals eat both plants and animals. The pig and even hu we humans are considered to be omnivorous animals because we eat both plants and animals. Then we have yet another mode of nutrition like the leech here, the tapeworm. This is a plant called the cascuta. And these organisms, they depend on living organisms for their nutrition, harming the host. And these are called parasites. And then we have the saprophytes. Like here we have the mushrooms. We have the bread mold. When we keep bread open, especially these days in the rainy season, we find the mold growing on them. And that is the saprophytes. And these saprophytes depend on dead, decaying organisms for their nutrition. Let's go ahead and understand the roles of decomposers. Decomposers are bacteria and fungi. And they play an important role in decomposing the dead, decaying matter. Let's follow the energy flow in an ecosystem. The energy from the sun is received by the plants. These are the only organisms that can capture the solar energy. The energy from the plants are, is then taken up by the consumers. Here are the consumers. And we have earlier seen the consumers could be herbivores, carnivores, omnivores and parasites. Once these plants and these consumers die, they then get decomposed and return back to the soil. Now this decomposition of the dead plants and animals is brought about by decomposers. Here we see the pictures of decomposers. Here they could be like worms, mushrooms, they decay the dead organic matter. You have a lot of bacteria, fungi, which are decomposers. And they break down the dead decaying matter into simpler material and return it back into the soil. 
So decompose, the plants and uh, consumers are decomposed by decomposers which convert the complex organic material in their bodies into simple inorganic material and return it back into the soil. So we could define decomposers as microorganisms comprising of bacteria and fungi that break down complex organic substances in dead remains and waste products of organisms into simple inorganic substances that go into the soil. So basically we have dead plants or could be animals or we could have waste materials of plants and animals, waste products these waste products are then converted into simple inorganic material and this is done by decomposers. The examples of decomposers are bacteria and fungi. This dead decaying um, material contains complex organic substances or products. So this complex organic substances which are present in the dead plants and animals or the waste of plants and animals is decomposed into simple organic material which then enters into the soil and back into the ecosystem. What would happen if in the absence of decomposers? There are two things that would happen. Number one, the replenishment of the soil would not take place. And second, there would be less place for new life in the biosphere. What do you mean by replenishment? As plants grow, they consume a lot of nutrients from the soil. Now, if the, if the animals do not decompose, or the plants or the dead, remains did not decompose, these nutrients would be trapped in their body and not released back into the soil. So the soil would slowly get depleted of the nutrients. It's very important that the, that the nutrients return back to the soil. Let's go over it again. Here we have light. The light falls on the plants. The plants produce the food. The food is then taken by the primary consumer. From the primary consumer, it goes to the secondary consumer or the carnivores. Now, once this carnivores, the plant, uh, animals and the plants, they decompose by the decomposers, they return back to the soil. And then from the soil, back again, the nutrients enter into the plant kingdom. So this is decomposition taking place. So this decomposers play a very important role to return the nutrients back to the soil. Here once again, we have the sunlight, the producers, from the producers the energy flows to the consumers. From the con when the consumers die and when the plants die, they are decomposed by the bacteria and fungi, they return back to the soil and from the soil the nutrients return back to the consumers, to the producers.